Hello, Leos. So let's see what's going on in this situation. Let's see. Eight of Cups. The Magician. Death. The Sun. Queen of Pentacles. Six of Pentacles. Nine of Wands. Eight of Pentacles. Okay, and then what comes next? Six of Wands, Ace of Swords, Ten of Swords, The Hanged Man. Hmm. Let me reposition this here just a little bit. Okay. So tell me more. I'm getting some kind of illusion. I, I don't know if it's black magic or it might just... There's some kind of illusion with these top cards. Let me let me see what I can get here. Eight of, Tell me more about the Eight of Cups and the Magician. Page of Cups. Six of Swords. King of Cups. The Empress. The Three of Pentacles. The Queen of Wands. The Lovers. The Nine of Cups, the King of Swords, the Tower, Judgment. Okay, I feel like, you know, this is what I've been feeling for Leos and what's kind of coming out in the reading is, is I feel a third party energy here because there's the Queen of Pentacles and then there's the Queen of Wands. And let me see. Let me go back here a little bit. It almost feels like, because we have the Magician and the Death card. Then we have the Page of Cups. So someone was trying to extend some kind of love offer. And it's like there's this back and forth energy between like leaving it in the past and then, you know, being the King of Cups and wanting to build something here with this Empress somebody who embodies uh, empress energy and also queen of wands energy this is like ultimate wish fulfillment in the lovers that's like soulmate twin flames it's a very strong bond but then with the king of swords in judgment and the tower it's almost like something was being rebuilt here there was something being built and then with the magician and the death it's like feel like something or someone got in this king of swords head and, and made him it's like he made a judgment call but it was almost like a it's like there was a tower moment where I feel like he, <sighs> tell me more about this. I feel like it's, it's like he was like a king of cups and then he, it's like he was really open hearted. I feel like maybe almost he was having a, like a heart chakra opening. Like there was a lot of really good, like lighthearted energy coming in. Like his, his chakras were opening. There was a sense of vulnerability and it's like something, because we have all these positive cards. When I asked about the Magician and the Death card, and then, you know, like before, what we just saw, we have all these positive cards, and then we have the King of Swords and the Judgment and the Tower. And it's almost like there was like this drastic, like almost overnight shift. Tell me more about the King of Swords, Judgment, and the Tower. It's like this King of Swords got in his head about something. There was like a tower, like an overnight perspective shift. Ten of Pentacles, Seven of Cups. Yeah, this is a third party situation. Ugh. It's confirmed with the three of cups here. It's what I was feeling. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting energy because it was almost like this king of swords was like rebuilding something or someone was wanting to rebuild with him. He was wanting to rebuild with them. There was some kind of emotional connection here that was being rebuilt. And then it's like something shifted where it was like this it's like he was in this Ten of Pentacles energy, like about to have everything with this person, about to have, you know, it's like true love, a home, uh, just collaboration. This is this is talking about material wealth, like physical abundance too. But I almost feel like I need to look into it more, but with the Magician and Death, it feels like something got in his head and kind of sabotaged this because the Ten of Cups is illusion. It's kind of being left in the dark it's also also multiple choices so I almost feel like this king of cups like it, it was almost unfamiliar territory to him where he 
maybe temporarily started being a king of cups. He started embodying that king of cups energy and he wasn't used to it. So he went back to his comfort zone. He went back to being the king of swords, to being what he's used to being and not really taking a leap of faith. Um, Cause they were building something here. They were building this 10 of pentacles together. Like they were trying to build this solid foundation, build trust together. Um, maybe have a home together even. And it's like something came up where he got stuck in his head, you know, confusion, overthinking, maybe also thinking about multiple options. I feel like there's a third party here for sure. Um, I feel like this third party is the one that may have done black magic as well. Because she saw him, she felt his energy shift. And she felt that he was building something with this Queen of Wands Empress energy. This, there's two different women here. So this Queen of Pentacles felt that energy. Um, she felt, and this is somebody from, uh, this is somebody who's known for a while that I feel like he was trying to, it's like there's this almost overnight shift. It's like he was trying to build this solid foundation with this Queen of Wands, um, and then it's like this illusion, like someone or something got in his head or maybe he got in his own head. It's like he felt his heart opening. Maybe he felt really happy for the first time in a long time. It's like the energy was just flowing. He was becoming a king of cups. He was becoming who he really is like deep down. Um, I mean, he was getting back in touch with, you know, his emotions, with maybe even an idealistic side to a degree. I mean, he's very, you know, with the king of swords, he is very logical. He does have a very logical side, but it was almost like he was like getting back in touch with another part of himself that he had lost. And, and yeah, building something with this queen of wands here. And then something or someone got in his head and made him doubt it, made him think, I almost feel like maybe he got really happy and it kind of scared him. And he's like, wait a minute, like, what if I just want to take a step back and I just want to play the field and see what else is out there? It's like self-sabotage where he was like close to taking that leap of faith. You know, he was feeling really good about everything he was feeling. It was like the, it was like these changes were finally coming into place in the physical. All the work that he's been doing on himself, like he finally saw it manifests in the physical. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like this King of Swords has been working on, you know, getting back in touch with his King of Cups side. I feel like both these sides, both these sides are very different. So King of Swords is like almost the opposite of the King of Cups. King of Cups is more emotional, mature, grounded, open. The King of Swords is logical, but sometimes the King of Swords is a little bit overly harsh, uh, kind of cutthroat. And, and so I feel like this, this person that is usually naturally a king of cups, um, but maybe has been a king of swords the last few years or so, uh, I feel like they were going back to being the king of cups again, basically. I feel like, you know, this queen of wands inspired these changes in him. And so I feel like there was this moment where, because I'm seeing it kind of clearly, where it's, it's like there was maybe like one or two moments where it's like he felt really vulnerable. He felt really open. He was ready to build. He was ready to do the work. And so was she. She was right there with him. She, you know, the Queen of Wands also was, you know, right there with him wanting to rebuild, wanting to, you know, what, whatever it takes, uh, you know, put the work in and, and rebuild trust and build that solid foundation because this is, you know, Ten of Pentacles. That's having everything with somebody. That's having, that's, you know, home stability. That's a really strong foundation that they wanted to build together. But like I said, it's like he got happy or he got vulnerable and it freaked him out and he went right back to King of Swords energy. And there's this kind of illusion where he's like, well, what else is out there? Is there, what if another third party is better for me? It's kind of like he sabotaged it. He, he might've, I don't know if he took things at face value, but it, it's like almost like he needed to dig deeper. Like he got stuck in his head. But I feel like this Queen of Pentacles is involved in this. I feel like she felt this energy shift. She felt his heart open and she felt like it was opening towards this Queen of Wands, this Empress energy. Uh, the Queen of Wands, the Empress, that's like somebody that he thinks very highly of and someone that's inspired him, someone that's been inspiring him to make these changes. Um, but yeah, somebody got in his head. We're going to look more into this. But with the Magician and the Death card here... It's, it's like she wanted him, the Queen of Pentacles wanted him to leave this behind. And there might have been black magic to try to make this ending happen here. Um, 
And it's like he was under this illusion that maybe like maybe a third party is better. Maybe there's something better for him out there. Maybe it's it's like he got he got caught up in his head. For some of you, I want to say too that not everybody. It's not black magic for everybody. This Queen of Pentacles might be another lover. It you know for some of you you have to use your intuition. For some of you, yes, this man is dealing with a, another woman, like another third party that maybe did some kind of magic here to try to separate him from the person he actually really wanted to build with and now he's in his head and he's confused and he's not sure maybe he just wants to play the field or be single like he's this man is very like very lost in his head right now uh very confused about where he's going what he's doing it's almost like there's this dark fog around him that he really needs to clear there's some kind of illusion here i, I just keep getting the energy of third party and illusion but anyway um Bear with me. I know this reading is a little bit, it, it's a little bit all over the place, but just I'm, I'm getting back into it. So just it'll, it'll get flowing as I pick up the story here. But uh, yeah, the Queen of Pentacles. So this could be another woman for some. This might actually be like somebody that he cheated with or that he uh, is who has been considering. This could also be like a mother, an aunt, a sister. Um, for some, for a few of you, I almost feel like this could be also an, this third party energy could be another aspect of himself. It might not even be an outside person. It might just be, he was happy. He was vulnerable. He was, you know, he was finally seeing some changes in the physical. And I just feel like there was like a moment of happiness where it just like, it's, it's like he freaked himself out. Um, where it's almost like he was like super happy and then he like made himself panic like he got in his head and he just kind of like shut down he's like oh no like it, it's like these feelings that he hadn't felt for a long time came back up pretty much but but yeah for some this isn't actually for some like I said it's another lover or a family member or a friend that is trying to interfere here because there is you know the magician card that can be black magic in this case because we see her trying to get him to walk away from this queen of wands with the death card and the eight of cups here and having this kind of illusion that, you know, she's his son. She's all, you know, that for some, this could be a mother or a sister. I don't know. Cause I'm just looking at like the baby here. Cause that's, that's a child. Sometimes I just notice that, but, but it's going to be different for everybody. Um, like I said, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit scattered today. So just, you know, bear with me. Most of my readings aren't going to be this scattered, but this, this message was pretty heavy, you know, and I've been channeling this for a bit um before I even started the reading so I kind of already had a sense on what was going to come out here but um yeah for some this queen of pentacles is is actually like an aspect of himself it for some it's not even another woman for some this is just a part of himself that is causing the sabotage basically it's something that he needs to deal with but whatever it is See, we have six of pentacles and nine of wands here. So there's some kind of situation with this queen of pentacles that is unbalanced. And it's almost like someone was like wanting to like fight for this and make the effort. You see someone studying, persevering. They feel like they're going to be successful. Six of wands. Um, and then there's some kind of truth and clarity that comes out that leaves this person feeling like devastated, heartbroken, betrayal new perspective. Tell me more about this Queen of Pentacles situation. Five of Swords, Six of Wands, or Seven of Wands reversed, Three of Swords. Yeah, this isn't really going to go well for him. Whether this is a mother or a sister or an aunt, or whether this is a an, another woman that he was, you know, thinking about entertaining and, and leaving this Queen of Wands behind, whatever it was, because there's some kind of black magic involved here that the Queen of Pentacles did. <sighs> Three of Swords, Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, because he's going to end up single, honestly. So we have, we have the Five of Swords. So there's conflict here with this Queen of Pentacles. I feel like, let me see here. I need to pause this. 
I keep getting the energy of this being like a karmic cycle because I had to pause for a minute to look at. So we have the Five of Swords. Then we have the Seven of Wands reverse. Seven of Wands upright is about standing your ground. It's about, you know, I, I feel like he's not going to be able to stand his ground with his Queen of Pentacles. There's going to be some kind of explosive argument here between them, between this third party. Whatever black magic she did, I feel like it's going to come back on her. If she did black magic, if that's, you know, like 50% of you, this is a woman that did black magic. 50% of you, this might just be another aspect of this man's personality that caused him to sabotage this, whatever it is. But it, something is backfiring here is what I'm getting. Because I feel like there's arguments with this queen of pentacles. So it's like, if this is, I feel like this man wanted to have his cake and eat it too, pretty much. You know, he got caught up in the seven of cups energy, like, well... What it, like not letting himself be truly happy, not letting himself just relax, just self-sabotage, subconscious self-sabotage pretty much. And he went back to third party situations. But I feel like it's not going to go well for him. This is going to be the, with the Queen of Pentacles. It's going to be a very short connection. If, if, if any, even a connection at all, I feel like him and this Queen of Pentacles are going to get in a pretty bad um, argument. There's going to be some kind of explosion seven of wands reversed he's not going to be able to stand his ground with this pink king with this queen of pentacles i feel like tell me more about that there's going to be some kind of it's it's some kind of ending here with this queen of pentacles and he's going to end up yeah and it's coming in quick knight of pentacles the hierophant seven of swords Ace of Cups, hmm. the Emperor, Three of Wands, Wheel of Fortune. And there's something about karmic, karma here with this wheel. I feel like this karmic lesson he's learning is how to be the emperor, how to step into this divine emperor energy here, this divine masculine role. Knight of Pentacles, the Hierophant. Yeah, because there's some kind of sneaky behavior here. With the Hierophant, the Hierophant can also be about traditions. It can be doing things a certain way. So I feel like this Queen of Pentacles really wanted to control him. She might be somebody that's more traditional, like she likes things done her way. This isn't somebody who's very free spirited or very open. This is somebody who's um, someone who kind of it's, it's a woman who kind of goes by the book. She might seem very stable and grounded and logical from the outside. But I feel like it's almost like a false Queen of Pentacles, because it feels like she tries to appear stable. But it feels like there's some kind of illusion here. And there's some kind of sneaky energy here with the Son of Swords. The Emperor, the Three of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune. Just bear with me. I'm still getting the storyline here. I'm still channeling it. Seven of Wands. Fool. The devil, two of pentacles. Yeah, it's like he's not going to have a new start in his life because he wanted to juggle. He wanted to he wanted to entertain both both these energies, both the queen of pentacles and the queen of wands. He thought he could have his cake and eat it too, two of pentacles. He thought he could juggle. He thought he could have this new start and just kind of play the field, do whatever he wanted. Um, and that's not for everybody. Like I said, for some, it's just this man's, his own mind that sabotaged him, or it could be a family member or a friend. So, you know, don't go accusing anybody of being in a third party connection unless you, you know, get proof of it. But um, yeah, there's karma here. There's karma here for sure. Because it's, it's like, I keep getting these cards where it's like, he thinks he's good. He's going to have this new start. He's going to juggle. He's going to do whatever he wants. And then it's like devil energy here where this is like chains uh, being blocked, tied up. 
This man could even have demonic attachments that he needs to clear. Because there's some kind of conflict with the Five of Wands where it's like he thinks he's going to go off and have this... this <laughs> he, he's go, he is kind of going down a different path, but it's like very stubborn. And I think the path that he's going down is, is one of illusion. Ten of Wands. Yeah, he thinks it's easier. He thinks it's the easy way out. Yeah, just kind of like giving up and just kind of Ten of Wands, releasing the burden. Knight of Cups. What is Knight of Cups doing? King of Wands. Two of Wands. I feel like... Tell me more about this third party situation. Because like, there's something about karma here. The Hermit... Yeah, yeah, this man is going to end up alone, honestly, for doing this, possibly. I mean, if he tries to juggle multiple energies or it's it's like, because Hermit is about being alone. Four of Swords is kind of being forced to go inward, to meditate, to connect with your intuition, with your spirit guides, temperance. Uh, that's about balancing things out. Okay, oh, I, see what's, I see what the universe is saying here, or I see what I'm channeling here. So the Wheel of Fortune... Basically, this masculine, it's not like a punishment. It's not like, oh, you have bad karma. I'm going to come get you. It's not like that. It's it's more like karma is more about the universe balancing things out. And the energy I get is that, you know, he had something really solid with this Queen of Wands. They were building something together. She was very invested in this. Maybe still is. Um, maybe not for some, but maybe, you know, maybe she still is for some. But... Um, I just, I feel like he was building something with her and I think he just kind of left her hanging is kind of what I'm getting because it's like they were both working towards that Ten of Pentacles and they would have gotten there to that place of, you know, rebuilding trust, having a solid foundation, having a solid connection, like getting to a really good place together. And I don't really think that he considered this Queen of Wands feelings. I don't think he considered her at all when he got in his head and he got scared because his heart was opening and he was vulnerable. Like, he didn't consider that, you know, she was mirroring his energy. She was feeling all that same emotion. She was feeling the heart chakra opening as well. She was feeling extremely just deeply in love, happy, just so vulnerable with him. And she, you know, she trusted him. Um... And he really just, it seems like he really didn't consider her feelings. He just kind of got in his head. He scared himself or there was some kind of black magic involved for some. And then, you know, there was this illusion, this kind of fog that came over him and he sabotaged and he went back to old patterns. Maybe went back to somebody like, I feel like he went back to his comfort zone. I feel like maybe with like the third party energy, it could be somebody from his past or something that was more, something that was easier for him. Basically, it felt easier. It felt more familiar, more comfortable. It, it, it didn't require so much vulnerability. It didn't require so much change. It, it was just, it's part of his comfort zone, basically. Um, but, but yeah, I, th I think there is bad karma here, honestly, for, for not considering other people in this connection, in this situation. Yeah, it's, it's not going to last with this Queen of Pentacles, honestly. For those of you that, that are dealing with a man who's who's in some kind of third-party situation, it's not going to last because we have all these cards that are talking about basically, you know, him thinking this is the easier route, this is a new start, this is great, and then there's conflict, there's fights, there's there's drama, there's explosions. Um, he's also not going to be able – there's something about that because I was getting he's not going to be able to really stand his ground with her. Like he's not – this Queen of Wands might have been willing to hear him out and work with him, but I feel like this Queen of Pentacles isn't really, um, let me, let me see, let me see. Oh, and I want to, let me, let me, let me emphasize this more. So the Hermit, the Four of Swords, the Temperance, again, that's not, it's not saying he's going to be alone forever, but if you're trying to juggle multiple parties at once, you're, you're going to end up losing all of them. That's kind of how that's going to work. Um, he's not going to be able to have like what he wants a queen of pentacles and a queen of wands and the next he wants a queen of cups too like he's he's not going to be able to do that to these women um that's going to all come crashing down on on him um i feel like with the hermit and four of swords it's like he's going to end up being left alone and he's going to be forced to go inward and meditate and do the work with this temperance energy too it's like there's this kind of rebalancing here 
Because I feel like this third party, I feel like... Let me see. Tell me more about this third party. Page of Pentacles. Nine of Swords. The Chariot. Seven of Pentacles. Ace of Wands. Knight of Wands. Okay, very sexual energy here, I guess. Page of Wands. Four of Pentacles. I feel like it's like lust with this Queen of Pentacles, or it's like a... It's like there's some kind of illusion here is kind of what I feel. there's anxiety there's some kind of sleepless nights sleepless nights anxiety insomnia the chariot i almost feel like he's just trying not he's trying to sweep things under the rug he's trying not to deal with his anxieties or insomnia or being in his head all the time uh whatever it is it's it's almost like this situation just felt easier so he kind of just ran away and he figured he could just go forward and but there's going to be that stagnation in the end. Four of Pentacles, Knight of Swords, Two of Cups, Four of Wands, The World, Six of Cups, The High Priestess, The Four of Wands is, let's see. It's a really interesting energy here. I feel like because the Four of Pentacles talks about somebody who just wants to keep their emotions to themselves. They want to just hoard things. It's kind of kind of almost a selfish energy. It's somebody not opening up, not not working with somebody, not being receptive. And with the Knight of Swords here, I feel like this man is gonna to want to come towards the Queen of Wands. Um there's going to be this nostalgic energy where he's going to want to come towards her, but how is she going to feel about this? Justice, Ace of Pentacles, Page of Swords, Strength, the King of Pentacles, Queen of Swords. Hmm. an interesting energy I feel like there's divine intervention there's divine justice here and with the ace of pentacles I feel like I feel like if he comes to her as a queen of pentacles or as a king of pentacles she's going to be in kind of queen of swords energy and usually king of pentacles is a good energy but in this context I'm almost feeling like it's more of a like, like trying to be like the King of Pentacles is logical. He's stable. He's grounded, but it's almost like she's, she's not entertaining that anymore. She's, she's going to match his energy. So if he's coming forward and he's not really making any offers, if he's trying to play the field, trying to have multiple people, um, or if he's, you know, for some of you, it's like, there's not really another person, but there is this energy of, um, just non-committal or maybe being in his head and having two different opposing like sides of his personality or maybe like opposing belief systems. Um, but I feel like if he comes at her with that kind of energy where he's just trying to be logical, he's trying to save face, he's trying to just kind of almost like have a wall up, then she's going to have a wall up as well. She's going to be the queen of swords. She's, she's not, the, the queen of wands isn't doing this with him anymore. She's not because she knows the high priestess is is somebody who's who's very intuitive. There's there's justice here. He's going to have to make some kind of real offer. No no breadcrumbing, no in and out, no third parties, no letting other people interfere in this connection. Um no being taken for granted. No uh you know, not she's she's not dealing with it being a struggle to see him, him not making time for her, not showing her that he wants to be in her life, um, just not really making any real effort towards her. The Queen of Wands isn't going to deal with that anymore. There's divine justice. He's going to have to come with something more solid 
or she's just going to keep being the queen of swords. She's just going to stay guarded. She's going to, she's, she's not going to trust him. She's not going to trust him if he's breadcrumbing her. She's not going to trust him if he's, if he's not making an effort. But I feel like, I mean, at least at this point in time, because it, it's, you, you can't really do this to a Queen of Wands or Empress energy for too long. The Queen of Wands, the Empress, that's a very powerful woman. It's not, you, you can't play those kind of games with somebody like that. Um, especially after she just kind of felt like she was left hanging there. Like she really opened her heart too. She really got excited about this new start with him too. She really... You know, she was feeling that same vulnerability and she was feeling all the same fears that he was feeling, but he left her stranded. He he prioritized his his pride or this illusion over her feelings, over her needs. So there is still a potential new start with uh with this man and the Queen of Wands, but only if he comes correct. And he's gonna have to do it sooner than later, it looks like. With justice and the Ace of Pentacles, and especially with her being in Queen of Swords energy, she's she's more cautious now. She's more she's not as trusting. She's not as naive as she was. Um, she's very aware of things. Uh, she's very aware of whatever was hidden as well. And I feel like there's there's spirit guide intervention here with divine justice with Ace of Pentacles. So yeah, this this King of Wands is if he wants her back, he's gonna have to. He's going to have to come correct. Like I said, no breadcrumbing, no in and out energy, no, um, you know, not talking to you on a regular basis or not making time for you, not taking you anywhere, not making you feel seen or wanted or special. Like all of that energy, that breadcrumbing energy is not going to fly with the, with the queen of wands anymore. Um, tell me more about this high priestess. The, yeah, the moon, <laughs> queen of cups, the moon. Yeah, she was a queen of cups and now she's in kind of this two of swords kind of guarded kind of fearful energy because of what she found out with the moon. The queen of wands found this shit out. Either, she is, either the queen of wands is a psychic or she gets psychic readings from somebody. So she's aware of this. She's aware of what's going on. And I just kind of feel like almost like he's blocked from having her in this Queen of Cups energy unless he wants to come correct. He wants, if he wants that Queen of Cups energy back, he's going to have to get rid of the third parties if there is one. Um, and just, you know, like I said, just doing the simple things that we just talked about, just being there, being supportive, showing an effort, being willing to be vulnerable. Um Because otherwise he's probably, you know, it, it doesn't, because there's cards that talk about loneliness here where it's, it's almost like, yeah, this queen of pentacles, if he is, if there is another woman, it's it's not going to work out with her. It's going to crash and burn. And that's going to be, let me look more into this because I keep getting something about karma and I want to look more into that. I've been feeling that energy. <clears throat> I want to say too, with the high priestess, well, actually, let me, let me, actually, let me ask this. Confirm the high priestess. Reconciliation. Third, yeah, she knows. She knows about any third party. She knows about hidden motives, red flags, waiting, hoping, praying, mental instability. Tell me more about what she knows about. Truth and clarity. Yeah. Yeah, she knows about the any manipulation, deception, any third party's energy, any energies like that. She's aware of it because so we've got sadness here, too, after all of it. Like I said, for some, he chose the easier route without considering anybody else's feelings involved, not only in the Queen of Wands feelings, but also the Queen of Pentacles feelings. I feel like this Queen of Pentacles, if it is a third party, for those of you that this is a third party, I don't think he really considered the Queen of Pentacles feelings either. I, I think he was just prioritizing himself and whatever he felt or thought in the moment. Um, but yeah, like I said, that's going to crash and burn. That's not going to go well. Um, there's going to be, I feel like, she, I feel like she's going to be the one to bring this conflict to him. He might actually try to it's, just, it's there's some kind of conflict. There's some kind of conflict. I want to say with the high priestess too, 
Is, is he aware? Like, the High Priestess... And this is that Queen of Wands Empress energy. That's who the High Priestess is in this in this spread. Is he aware that the High Priestess knows all this stuff? Love, offer, commitment, codependency, happiness, warmth, light. Spying. I feel like he was afraid of being codependent with her. He doesn't know the difference between just needing somebody who's actually like, you know, a supportive, loving figure in your life. And I almost feel like he was so, it's like he wanted to make this love offer to her, I feel. And then he got scared that it was codependency or addiction, or he just got in his head. Um, and he was afraid of, I just feel like he's afraid of, um, he's afraid of being seen, but I feel like he's, he's also afraid of like losing himself to somebody. He's afraid of the loss of control. He's afraid of somebody having power over him. And he doesn't really understand the difference between like a toxic codependent relationship and like a really loving mutual relationship where you guys, you know, you just need each other because that's your person. Um, but yeah, now it's like he's spying with this, you know, happiness, warmth, light. He's wanting that happiness back. He's wanting, you know, he's realizing the feelings are mutual, but he's got this pride and stubbornness. Pause, reflection, rest finances career yeah he tried to he maybe tried to avoid this he maybe he tried to run from this but nostalgia is coming up and listening and understanding new perspective um with the high priestess here as well I do want to say the high priestess knows everything like there's nothing that you can hide from the high priestess and that's what this queen of wands empress energy is and I feel like I feel like it's going to freak him out because he's going to come to this awareness that she knows. She she knows. She can feel it. She's psychic. Or she goes to a psychic. Either way. But she... How do I explain this energy? Shine. Yeah. Fear of rejection. She was on his side. She was, he was afraid of rejection. She, he was afraid of being hurt, but she was never going to hurt him. She was actually trying to help him end old patterns, end old cycles, break through, you know, be the person that he wants to be. Um, and I think that he's going to have deep regret for the choices that he's made, for getting caught up in this illusion, for getting caught up in fear, for, for choosing pride, for choosing ego over true love, pretty much. Um... Another thing I feel like he doesn't realize with the high priestess. So the high priestess, like I said, it's like it's the high priestess is the most intuitive woman in the deck. She she knows everything. She sees everything. She's she's very psychically in tune. Um, there's not really anything that you can hide from her. She can feel energy. She can feel when the vibe is off. She might be very sensitive to energy. But she doesn't say anything. She doesn't, she doesn't, the high priestess doesn't speak. She's all knowing, but she doesn't really speak. She just observe, observes. She, you know, she watches how the energy plays out. She takes notes. She channels, but she might not actually tell anybody what she's picking up on, what she's channeling. And I, I feel like the woman in this situation is that high priestess where, you know, I don't think this man realizes that you already know about whatever mental instability he has that made him afraid of being rejected by you. You already know about it. Because it's, it's almost like he has, like, he could have a personality disorder for some or mental instability that's not for everybody. Or he could, it's it's like he has this, this side to himself, this where he's just in his head over analyzing um, anxiety, maybe insomnia for some. And I feel like, I feel like this masculine, I feel like he tries to choose his words wisely. He tries to plan everything out that he says. It's like he likes to be in control. He likes to have that illusion of control. He doesn't like anybody seeing this, you know, this side of himself that he considers unstable. He doesn't like anybody. Um, it's almost like he sees life as just like this game where he just has to one up everybody or he has to, he constantly has to put on this facade. He feels like. You know, and it, it's it's almost like he wanted to make this love offer, but I feel like he was kind of afraid that if if she if this Queen of Wands saw his mental instability, if she saw this other side of him, that you know he was afraid that she would reject him. So he got in his head overthinking. It's it's like just this other side of himself. I also feel like for okay for some it's like mental instability, and it's like these these 
it, it's just like this fear that if, if she saw a certain part of him that she wouldn't want him anymore, but that's not the case because the reality is the high priestess, like I said, she knows everything. She already saw this in him. She already channeled this. She already picked up on this energy. There is nothing that he can really hide from her. She knows. She knows about his past traumas. She probably knows about his childhood traumas. She probably, she knows about his, she, she just, she knows him on a very deep soul level. She already knows him. Um, and she accepted all of him. She accepted, you know, the Queen of Wands accepted every part of him. The mental, even if there is mental instability, she still chose him. She still just wanted to be with him above all else. And I feel like this man sabotaged and he almost, it's, it's like he's caused his own isolation, his own loneliness, his own emptiness by overthinking and overanalyzing and sabotaging here. By getting in his head and thinking that she wouldn't accept this if she knew this. And little did he know the high priestess, this queen of wands that I am channeling, she already, all the things that he was afraid of the queen of wands seeing in him, she already has seen in him for a while. She's already known about this. She's already known about past traumas he has. She's already known about fears that he has. She's already, they're very psychically linked. They're, they're, they have a very strong telepathic bond. So she's already aware of all this energy. And for some, I feel like it's, it's just him also a side of himself that he's been suppressing that he didn't want to come back up. And so he was trying to put on a facade and trying to, like I said, plan his words wisely, choose his approach, trying to, trying to present a certain image instead of just being, you know, honest and genuine and in tune with his emotions and just letting it flow naturally. It's like he tried to, to plan everything out and control everything and, uh, and just put this, you know, show people this image. It's like this man cares a lot about what people think. He cares a lot about his image. And I feel like that backfired on him. Because for one, like I said, it, it's like he didn't realize that this woman was, she She already knew these things. She already knew his his flaws. She knew about his, you know, his traumas, um, aspects of his personality that he might have wanted to hide. She's already seen all of that. And she's already accepted him and loved him through all of that. She's already, you know, she already chose him. She already was sure about him. Um, but he caused his own lo loneliness by by getting in his head and sabotaging and getting in this illusion energy instead of seeing the love and the support that was right in front of him. You know, this Queen of Wands was never going to reject him. She was going to support him through this. She was going to help him end these cycles. You know what I mean? Like she was trying to help him come out of this darkness and be the man that he wants to be. And, you know, he broke her heart and he left her hanging and he breadcrumbed her and he didn't really give her a solid offer. He didn't really give her um, anything, really. He didn't really give her anything stable. He just kind of took her for granted, uh, maybe wanted to see what else was out there or didn't just got caught up in his head with something. It's like a drastic energy shift is what I keep getting where both the Queen of Wands and this this man, they both were really open hearted and like really excited and just building something together and, you know, rebuilding trust if trust had been lost, like rebuilding trust on both sides, like both of them were putting the work in and then he's like he got scared, he got in his head and he just sabotaged and left her hanging. When she was never going to leave him, she was never going to reject him. She was never going to break his heart. Like those fears were an illusion. That was just him feeling insecure and sabotaging himself and assuming that she wouldn't. It's like he has her on a pedestal or he he assumes that she wouldn't um, accept him if she if she knew those things about him. But like I said, with the high priestess, she already knew those things about him and she already accepted him. She already embraced him. You know what I mean? Like she was never... All the things that he's trying to hide from her, whether good or bad things, she's already seen all of those things. And, you know, she she chose to be with him anyway. She loved she loved every part of him. Love or loved, either way. Um, you know, I think she loves every part of him. Like she she, you know, whatever this is, it it doesn't scare her off. She she wants him anyway. But um yeah, I will say though with the with the cards I'm getting, let me see here. Let me see here. Tell me more about the third party situation. Trapped, blocked, tied up, past life connection, magic intention power. New love. Yeah, it's it's like he got caught up with some kind of some kind of magic here. 
hesitation, mixed feelings, choose a path, adventure. He thought, yeah, he thought it would be the easy way out. Stagnation, complacency. And now there's stagnant energy with his actual true love. Now he's created blocks between them because he wasn't loyal and he wasn't really giving her that offer. He wanted to just, he, he wanted the easy way out. Dreams, visions, telepathy, hidden truth. Yeah, this, because it... Divine intervention, synchronicity. Oh, yeah. X, the past. Taking it so, pulling them in. Passion, romance. Yeah. Because she, the Queen of Wands found this out through her dreams, I feel like. She found some stuff out. There was a hidden truth that came out. Divine intervention. I also feel like, because I keep getting this energy of him, it's kind of like a temporary excitement, like a temporary lust with this Queen of Pentacles. Like, it's not really true love. I feel like it's just like she's, you know, something new and exciting or, or whatnot, or it might be, maybe it felt more, it, it felt like almost like he was going back to the familiar because this Queen of Wands would have required him to, you know, be vulnerable and be open, like, but she was right there with him. Like I said, she was, she was vulnerable. She was open too. And, and he never really considered that. He never considered how she was feeling. But, um, I feel like the queen of pentacles felt, it was almost like this illusion of stability with the queen of pentacles where he felt like it was just easier. You know, there wasn't as much to work through possibly, or it just, it, it was familiar, maybe even like toxic, like, Oh, I'll just, I'll just go back to what I'm, what I'm familiar with instead of, you know, continuing on my journey and opening my heart and, um, you know, being the person I want to be. It, it, it's like, like I said, he got, he got in his head and he got scared and he didn't really consider anybody else in that moment. Um, but yeah, I feel like the queen of wands, I feel like her spirit guides are revealing this, these hidden truths to her, maybe in the dream state as well. There's divine intervention. There's synchronicity here. It's not, nothing's going to stay hidden pretty much. This man, if he is dating anybody else or if there is another person, he's going to have to cut her off if he wants to get her back. Otherwise, he's going to lose the Queen of Wands. She's she's not going to entertain any of this third party. Whatever this is, she's not doing it. But I honestly feel like whether the Queen of Wands is in his life or not, like whatever he chooses, it's not going to work with the Queen of Pentacles. Like, we got all that energy of there being an explosion and there being, being the wheel of fortune, so, like, a karmic lesson. Like, it's it's almost like he thinks, oh, he thinks, oh, this is easy. Like, this is, you know, this is easier. This is, you know, I'm familiar with this. I don't have to step out of my comfort zone with the Queen of Pentacles. And he's going to have a really rude awakening where they're going to have a pretty chaotic falling out if they haven't already. Um, Because I feel like... The divine isn't going to let this man just do the same thing with woman after woman after woman, honestly. The karmic is going to end up complaining because there's something where he feels like this queen of wands. Maybe it's, it's there's something I don't know if it's like the connection or her that he feels is difficult, but he's he's not really seeing the energy behind that. He's not seeing like all the pain and love that might be behind that behind her energy. He just maybe took things at face value or he misinterpreted things perhaps. But I, th I think there's there's some karmic lessons here. And it's not like saying, oh, he has bad karma. The universe is out to get him. It's not like that. But remember, we were getting the uh, those cards about him ending up alone and him having to, you know, the temperance card, too, which is about balance. We got what was it? The, the hermit, the four of swords. So like, you know, being alone and having to go inward and having to connect with your higher self, having to connect with your spirit guides. And then temperance is about being, you know, bringing about balance. So I feel like the Queen of Wands, you know, this this potential life partner of his, this Queen of Wands, uh, Empress energy, I feel like she was meant to, I feel like part of their connection, it's like she was kind of helping guide him out of that period of darkness. She was helping him reconnect with his true self. She was helping him because this is this is somebody who's at war with himself. I feel like this masculine, it's like there's two conflicting energies, two very different sets of belief. And he's exhausting himself. It's like he's going in circles. He's just absolutely exhausting himself um, and sabotaging. And he's just he's tired of being at war with himself. 
he's tired. It's, it's like he holds back his feelings. He holds back his, um, he just holds back like major aspects of his personality. He's really sabotaged himself and he's really suppressed his soul pretty much. It's like he's not in touch with his soul as much as he should be. It, it's like he's, you know, he's really just suppressed um, a lot of, a lot of who he really is. And I feel like this queen of wands was helping him through that. She was helping him reconnect with those old aspects of his personality and, um, maybe wrap up karmic lessons, not sabotage anymore. Um, be willing to be vulnerable, be willing to be open, be willing to be your true self and not care what people think, not worry so much about what toxic people around you think. Cause I feel like this man is like worried about all the wrong people's opinions, honestly. Um, but it's like he just, he cared too much about his pride. He cared too much about his image. He cared way too much about how people saw him. For some, it was almost like maybe he uh, didn't want people to see him as romantic or weak or vulnerable. Like he kind of feels like emotions are a weakness. Like he didn't want people to see him a certain way because it, it's it's like... I don't know. It, it just, it just, I just get that sense of him like sabotaging himself where he was almost there. Finally, he was really opening up to, to that side of himself. Again, he was finding that balance between being a queen, a king of cups and a king of swords. He was really finding that emotional, logical balance. He was letting his emotions flow again. He was maybe not caring as much about what people think and finally just living for himself. Um, you know, just, just really, being the man that he wants to be and prioritizing being the man that he wants to be. Uh, like really just being true to himself, really just being in touch with his emotions again and not being at war with himself anymore. Really just finding that balance. And I feel like, let me see here. It's not very many cards left, so we'll see what we get. <laughs> Eight of, Yeah. Eight of Swords, Five of Pentacles, the Star, the Ten of Cups. Okay, interesting energy. Um, there's still hope here, but he's gonna have to make some. Oh, okay, I see what I see what it's saying here. I see what it's saying, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, damn, this is a this ended up being a lot longer than I planned. Um. Oh my God, where was I? <laughs> So I was saying, yeah, the Queen of Wands was like, you know, meant to, you know, that was his his person or or she at least saw him as, as her, or her person. Um, but, uh, you know, she was meant to help guide him through that, to help him and his spirit guides were helping him and, and her spirit guides were helping them. You know, there's been a lot of spirit guides working with this man for a long time. And I almost feel like the spirit guides have gotten kind of fed up with him, like they're getting kind of annoyed at this point. And I mean, it happens. Spirit guides do get annoyed. Like they do get to that point where they're like, okay, this is like, like he ignores the signs. He ignores the synchronicities. He listens to, he listens to like, he like, he'll listen to all the wrong people or people that like fill his head with doubt or fear. Those things are easy for him to believe, but anything good is, is hard for him to believe. And he pushes it away. It's almost like, what is it? Like cognitive dissonance, I think it's called, or or, or like bias or there's some there's some kind of term some kind of psychological term for it but um I feel like regardless of, of whether he's in this queen of wands life or not he's he's still he's still going to be pushed to learn these karmic lessons because I feel like like I said like I was saying earlier I feel like with this third party situation I feel like he you know, like I said, he thought the Queen of Pentacles, he got in his head, he got scared, he ran, he thought the Queen of Pentacles would be easier. And like I said, for some, it's not for some, the Queen of Pentacles isn't a, an ex lover or somebody that he went to for some, it really is like a family member or friend that did black magic or, or even just an aspect of his own personality where he got in his head. And it's almost like a whole it, it's almost like two different sides of his personality, whatever it might be. Um, he ran back to the familiar, he ran back to his comfort zone. And um, what I'm seeing here is he's pretty much going to be violently pushed out of his comfort zone. His spirit guides aren't doing it with him anymore. They're not. And neither the Queen of Wands spirit guides, too, they're, they feel the same way. They're, there's divine justice that's coming in here. Um, and it's not like saying, oh, this person. It's, it's not like bad karma in the sense like, 
oh, the universe is out to get you, but there's the karma in the sense of, and a lot of it has to do with him ending up feeling alone, um, but karma in the sense of balancing. They're, they're not... He's not going to get the easy way out. It's going to things are going to crash and burn with this Queen of Pentacles if they haven't already. Um, I do predict. I do predict for some there's already been a, a major falling out. Like I'm, I'm getting like a bad argument. I'm not talking about like just like a, a kind of distance between them. I'm talking about like a major argument um, between him and the Queen of Pentacles. Or if this is an aspect of his personality and not actually a third party, then it's a. Uh, because third party energy could, you know, it, it it's some kind of outside energy. But if, if it's an aspect of his personality, if it's like, if it's him just being at war with himself, he's going to crash and burn. He's going to get to that point where he's so exhausted fighting, fighting himself and going in circles um, and just being at war with himself that it's like, I'm hearing that song, uh, Let Go by Fro Fro. So it's, it's almost like he's just going to be at war with himself for so long. He's just going to break, but there's going to be some kind of chaos. Like it's not going to feel pleasant for him at all. It, it's going to feel like bad karma. It's going to feel like everything in his life is just falling apart all at once. It's it's not going to feel great for him. Um, yeah, whatever this is, is going to fall apart pretty quickly, honestly. It was some kind of illusion here that's, that's basically going to fall apart. Because um, I, like I feel like with the Queen of Pentacles too, if, if he is actually dealing with another woman, I feel like... Because like I was saying, he felt like it would be easier. You know what I mean? It was like there was something there where he kind of ran from this and he's like got in his head because he was he was seeing a few. They were both seeing a future together. They were both wanting to build a future and build a life together and build something solid because they have this deep mutual love for each other, him and the Queen of Wands. But like I said, it's like he got scared and ran. And then I think um, I think he felt like the Queen of Pentacles would be easier. I think maybe maybe it was someone from his past or it's something that just doesn't require change, doesn't require emotional growth. It allows him to stay stagnant, uh, stay in his comfort zone, um, you know, play games or do whatever he's doing. Like, like it... It, it just allows him to be complacent. It allows him to stay in his comfort zone and not have to be vulnerable and not have to make any changes. And the thing is, I feel like this this karmic, this third party Queen of Pentacles is going to end up complaining about all the same things that you complained about. And that's what it's going to take for him to... It's, it's, she might even treat him the same way he treated the Queen of Wands. Or she's going to point out the same things that the Queen of Wands pointed out to him. Like she might be like, hey, I don't like that you're emotionally unavailable or I don't like that we, uh, we, you know, we rarely see each other or you don't really talk to me every day. You don't really, um, you know, I don't really feel beautiful around you. I don't really feel wanted. Like she's going to feel the same way the Queen of Wands felt. They're, they're both going to feel that way. Um, so it's like when this Queen of Pentacles complains about all the same things that the Queen of Wands complained about, it's going to force this man to take a look in the mirror and, you know, not just think that he can do this to, you know, repeat the same patterns with woman after woman after woman and just run away and, you know, go play the field and go be with somebody else whenever things get too hard. It's it's not going to work. Whatever this Queen of Pentacles is going to say to him or whatever explosion is going to happen here, something's going to happen, whether it's it, some something's going to come up that's going to force him to look in the mirror. It's going to force him to take accountability. Um... You know, he's not really going to get away with this, honestly. It's kind of like this masculine honestly has, it, it's like he has a choice. He can get on his divine path. He can spiritually awaken. Um, or, you know, he's going to lose everything, honestly. Because we have those cards that talked about karma and we talk, it talked about being alone, too. Where if he wants to play these games, if he wants to have multiple parties, and he's going to end up losing not only the Queen of Pentacles, but the Queen of Wands as well. He's, he's going to end up losing everything. Um, and the divine is basically going to end up forcing him to be alone at that point because they're not going to let him play multiple women. They're not going to let him, and that's not for everybody. For some, your person, you know, for some, he, he's not doing that, but for some, for some, that is what's going on. But, um, but yeah, it's almost like the, the spirit guides are going to come through and he's going to have to, he's going to end up just having to be alone and he's going to end up just, it, it's like he's, 
he's going to be forced to face himself pretty much is what I'm saying. It's not like, it's not like the universe is out to get him. It's not like that. It, it's more like he's just going to be forced to face himself. He's not going to be able to use this woman as an escape, this queen of pentacles. She's, she's going to leave or he's going to leave. It's, it's not going to work. Um, he's not going to be able to just take the easy way out like, like that. And I feel like he might even try to, if she leaves, I feel like he might even try to go out and and find like a new third party or some kind of distraction, something to, something so he doesn't have to focus on himself, something so that he doesn't have to, for her some it could be drinking or it could be something else too, it might not even be a person, but he's going to go, he's going to want to go out and look for some kind of distraction so he doesn't have to deal with his own inner demons, so he doesn't have to take a look in the mirror and do the inner work, and he's going to try to distract himself, and he's not going to be able to, he's not going to be allowed to. Um, the divine is, is possibly going to have to temporarily isolate this man so that he doesn't have those distractions and he's forced to do the inner work that he's been trying to avoid. Because like I said, she's going to point out the same things that the Queen of Wands pointed out. And that's when it's going to kind of click that, hey, maybe it's, you know, like, like he can't just blame other people for this. There's He has a role in this too. Um, so he's going to be forced to take accountability pretty much. I feel like, uh, what was I going to say about this? Yeah, because I, I feel like with with karma, it, it's, it's almost like, like I said, the divine was trying to gently nudge him for a long time. I feel like the queen of wands and her spirit guides and maybe his spirit guides as well. There was multiple spirits that were working on this because this is like a divine couple here. This is true love. Um, but I just feel like, I feel like he wasn't, it's like he would go back and forth where he would kind of start thinking, okay, I should open up. I should, I should do something. I should make an effort. And then he would get scared or he would get prideful and he would go back to his old ways. He'd go back to his old comfort zone. And it was like, it's like this back and forth energy where this man has just kind of been at war with himself and he's just exhausting himself. But I, I feel like there was like a gentle nudge, like, you know, she was kind of slowly like leading him out of the dark. It was very gentle, but, you know, he chose to stay in that comfort zone. Um, and so I feel like now there's just chaos coming into his life, to be honest. It, it's like he's, the, like I said, the divine isn't doing this with him anymore. They're, they're not tolerating this. He, he's not him treating people like this or him staying in his comfort zone, uh, prioritizing what people think over who he truly is, prioritizing um, maybe being a people pleaser for some, uh, you know, not being, just just seeing relationships or seeing friendships as like a game, uh, having a facade, not willing to be vulnerable, not willing to be open, trying to one-up people, um, maybe playing like mind games for some, it just, it just seems like more than anything, just him being at war with himself, just him not wanting to be vulnerable, him not wanting to be open, him being, um, him not being mindful of the people around him, him, uh, you know, basically, like I said, just kind of being at war with himself, not, it, it's kind of like he was at war with his spirit guides. It's like, he didn't want to embrace his intuition. He didn't want to embrace his higher self. He wanted to stay in his comfort zone. He wanted to just get by. He didn't want to have to make an effort. He didn't want to have to change in the right ways. Um, it's it's kind of just feels like this man, like it's like it's it's like he just chose fear over love, pretty much. He chose pride over love. I just get this energy of him, like. Just, yeah, just, just like I said, just being at war with himself. And I feel like his higher self has been trying to get through to him and trying to like almost merge with him. You know what I mean? Like his true self has been trying to, it's almost like he's suppressing his own soul. Like he's at war with himself and it's like, he's suppressing these aspects of himself that he misses deep down. You know what I mean? Like his more emotional side, his vulnerable side, his, his more empathetic side, it's like things that he's afraid will make him, you know, get him hurt or rejected or make him look weak or, you know, like I said, worrying too much about what other people think, being impressionable. So, you know, he's kind of been at war with himself and, and not, um, not listening to his intuition, not listening to his spirit guides, not getting on board with them, 
not uh not embracing his higher self like pushing his higher self away pushing his own soul away and you know like I was saying it was it was you know spirit guides were gently nudging him at first and now there's going to be like a tower moment for him it's like a violent push where the, these spirit guides aren't playing anymore with him they're not doing it with him anymore he's not really going to be able to go back to his comfort zone there's there's going to be and it's sad that it had to happen this way because it's like he could have just made these changes on his own. He could have taken the easier, gentle path and, you know, worked on himself and started, you know, stepping out of his comfort zone and working on embracing aspects of himself that he's suppressed and, you know, healing old traumas and getting back in touch with his emotions and, um, you know, being mindful of other people and just, just being the person he wants to be, just, just doing what he knows he needs to do, uh, working on himself. And, you know, like I said, that could have been a very gentle, easy path. That could have been something that he just gradually did. And it's, it's almost like he's, he did make progress. He has made progress, but then it's like, he would always, it's like he would take a few steps forward and then 10 steps back. He would get afraid of the unknown, afraid of the unfamiliar, afraid of, you know, possible pain or afraid of, it's almost like there's like parts of himself that um it's like he vowed to never never be um in touch with those parts of himself again like he might have made a promise to himself like when he was upset and be like I'll never open my heart again or I'll never be vulnerable I'll never look stupid again or something and so he's trying to be all tough and and kind of be closed off and he's not realizing like that that's what makes him look kind of dumb you know what I mean like that's that's not that's not true masculine energy when you're just being closed off it's it's not that's not what that's not what it means to be a mass in a masculine energy um but yeah it's almost like he I don't know it's not like I don't want to say a soul contract but it's almost like he like made a promise to himself and he feels stupid going back on that promise he feels you know and he needs to just get over that he needs to get over the fear of looking stupid or the fear of people judging or the fear of what people are going to think he needs to just be willing to admit when he's wrong. He needs to just be like, yeah, I was wrong. I My perspective has changed. I'm willing to grow. I'm willing to admit that, you know, yes, I may have promised before that I would never be open hearted again or I would never be this person again. But you know what? I like things change. I want it. You know what I mean? Like I want to grow. I want to open myself up. I want to be that I want those aspects of my personality back. I want to be in touch with my higher self. I want to listen to my spirit guides, to my intuition. You know what I mean? Um, and so, so yeah, it's just like, like I was saying, it's just like him being at war with himself where it's like he would make these little, it's like he would start making progress and then he would, he would panic or he would sabotage and go back to the comfort zone or he felt like it was too hard. Um, and so now, like I said, the divine is coming in and this man has some pretty bad karma. I hate to say it like that, but it's kind of what I'm seeing here. Um, He's like I was saying, he's going to be forced to face himself. He's not going to be able to just distract himself with whoever. Um, any any connections like that are going to be very short lived. If he's trying to if he's trying to use someone to distract himself like this Queen of Pentacles, it's not going to there's just going to be drama. There's going to be fights. It's it's not working. It's not going to happen. Um, and like I said, he's going to be forced to take a look in the mirror because he didn't want to do it on his own. He didn't want to take a look in the mirror and make these changes on his own or he or he, you know, he did, but he ultimately would keep going back to his old old patterns and old comfort zone so he's gonna have to be willing to take a leap of faith and step out of his comfort zone because yeah I feel like the divine is just coming in and they're just shaking his entire life up there could be issues with work there could be issues in like love money career just everything honestly there could just be issues all around right now could be falling out with friends even there's just there's a lot and like I said it's not the universe punishing him it's not like that it's it's not like the universe isn't out to get him it's just it's it's again just he didn't want to do it the gentle way he had opportunity op after opportunity after opportunity to make these changes on his own the gentle way and he chose not to he chose his pride he chose his fear he chose his comfort zone over his soul over true love over being genuine honest authentic over his you know being the person he wants to be he he chose the familiar and so so now the divine is coming in and shaking up everything in his life and he's he's probably going to have that ten of swords moment where it just everything just crumbles um 
And he's going to have to look in the mirror and, and face himself finally. He's going to have no choice. Like his spirit guides are just his spirit guides are fed up. His spirit guides are, are out of patience with him. His spirit guides are at that point where they're like, no, you're going to have to you're going to have to deal with these suppressed traumas. Now you're going to have to deal with these suppressed aspects of your personality. You're going to have to deal with the things that you've been running from. You're going to have to merge with your higher self. Use your intuition again. Connect with your spirit guides again be the person you want to be, be your true self again. Like you're going to have to, this war that he's in with himself is just going to reach this, it, like this final battle where it's just, it's just going to, everything is just going to crash. He's just going to exhaust himself. Honestly, is kind of what I'm feeling. So yeah, lots of, lots of karma here. Lots of uh, being, and again, karma is, it's not punishment. It's, it's rebalancing. It's he didn't want to do it the easy way. So now the divine is there's divine intervention that the spirit guys are coming in and they're they're saying, OK, fine, I guess we'll do it the hard way then. You know, you didn't want to learn the easy way. I guess I guess we're doing this the hard way. Um, let's see here. I do want to say to let's see. I do want to say too that this person is this man if you're the queen of wands and you've been dealing with somebody like you know you've been dealing with this man that doesn't want to step up doesn't want to work on himself uh doesn't want to make an effort for you just kind of wants to have his cake and eat it too and kind of just you know kind of just wants to breadcrumb you and and have you around when he's bored and lonely but not give you anything solid um I do want to say, like, I think the Queen of Wands here, if that, you know, I, I think you need to to know not to make excuses for this man because this man is completely capable of being the Emperor. He's capable of stepping up. He's capable of being in that. The Emperor is like daddy energy. The Emperor is like the masculine father, you know, like father or just, you know, daddy, basically. Like the Emperor is is... The, the most masculine energy in the deck. The emperor is a protector. He's a provider. He's an alpha male type. Um, so I want, I want to say like, you know, for anyone that's in the queen of wands energy, it's like, just don't make excuses for this man. Recognize too. That was something that I was channeling. That's, that's really important is, is no longer making excuses because like I said, I feel like she gently tried to guide him out of this. She was supportive. She was loving. She was patient with him. And, um, you know, I, th I think she was really, yeah, I think she was very patient with him. I think she, she really, you know, just wanted to build something with him. And I feel like, you know, she's like, I think she's, she's at that point where she's like, well, what's the point of being patient and understanding and gentle if he's just going to take me for granted and abandon me and leave me out in the cold whenever I'm gentle, whenever I'm, you know, patient and understanding, he just, he just uses it, uses it to an advantage. He just takes it for granted. He just kind of does whatever. So, so why bother being patient? Why being gentle? Why being understanding with him? If he's not giving me that same energy back, if he's not, you know what I mean? Cause she really is heartbroken and she really felt like they were building something together. And then she got left, left out in the cold. Um, when he got scared and ran and, and kind of got caught up in this illusion energy. But um, but what I wanted to say with both that is I'm getting this strong message that if you're the queen, if you're that queen of wands that's dealing with with this this man that's going through these these you know this karmic cycle right now because he didn't want to learn the easy way, I do want to say like you can be supportive and understanding and loving if he gives you reason to be like if he's if he's actually verbally talking to you and letting you know hey I'm doing the work like I do want this connection with you, um, I'm cutting out third parties like I I am like I do want this, then yeah, I think that, you know, it's it's fine to be gentle and understanding and, and work with him on that. But I just want to say, don't make excuses for him. Don't, because I feel like in the past, maybe you made excuses like, oh, he's damaged or he's afraid or he has trust issues. No, this man that I'm channeling, like he's, like I said, the high priestess knows everything. He might not be aware that she knows this, but she knows, she knows there's not a single thing that she, that he can hide from her. Um, 
And I want to say, I think this man is fully capable of being in the emperor energy. He's fully capable of being in the masculine role, being in that daddy energy, taking control, getting things done, stepping out of his comfort zone, taking a leap of faith, being emotionally expressive with this queen of wands, um, like being in the masculine role. He's fully capable of being in the masculine role. Don't let him convince you that he's unable to do that. He chose not to do that. He chose fear and pride over true love. Um, and I, th I think that he also knew that the queen of wands would be daddy. She would be the one to, sh you know, she would be in the masculine role. She would, he was used to, he's used to her taking care of everything. So he didn't have to, you know, why would he have to take care of everything when she's doing it for him? If she's putting all the work in for him, why would he, why would he need to bother? So, so yeah, if you're that queen of wands, don't make excuses for him. He's not, even if there is trauma and fear here, he's he's still fully capable. He's still a grown man that makes his own decisions. And it's it's ultimately up to him to choose true love over fear and over pride. Uh, but he's fully capable of being in that daddy energy. He's fully capable of being the emperor. He's fully capable of being emotionally expressive. He's fully capable of making an effort towards his queen of wands. And I think she recognizes that now. She recognizes that, you know, if he's not making an effort, it's because he doesn't want to make an effort. If he's not sh if he's not showing up, it's because he doesn't want to show up. She's not going to make excuses. She's not going to blame it on his traumas or on his fears or just say, oh, he's got a lot to go through, a lot, lot to learn. No, she's not doing that anymore. Um, she's going to take things at face value now. So if he's not talking to her, if he's not cutting third parties out, if he's doing the same stuff, she's going to take it for what it is. She's not going to She's not going to make excuses. If he's not messaging her, she's going to assume he doesn't want to message her. If he's not prioritizing her, she's going to assume it's because he doesn't want to prioritize her. But keep in mind, he's capable of it. He's capable of being the emperor. He's capable of being emotionally expressive. He's, he's capable of making that effort. So so don't don't get caught up like making excuses for him and thinking that he's just, you know, as, as afraid as someone is, they're still capable of sending that romantic message or sending, making that love offer or saying, Hey, I'm sorry. I want to work on myself. I'm going to do better. I, I want to do right by you. He's fully capable of doing those things. And if he really wants to be with this queen of wands, he will do those things. So I feel like he kind of has, um, I mean, he's got this, these crazy karmic shakeups either way. But he kind of has two options here. I feel like I feel like this Queen of Wands does still love him, but she doesn't trust him nearly as much. And I feel like she is pretty upset. Um, and with these, with the way these came out, I feel like he has two options here. He can try to stay in the Eight of Swords energy, which is Eight of Swords is like I said, playing a victim. Uh, not see it like kind of blindfolding yourself feeling trapped feeling playing small he can he can keep playing it small if he wants he can stay in his comfort zone if he wants but if he does that um he's going to be left out in the cold he's not he's going to end up losing queen of wands queen of pentacles whoever else like he's he is not If he's not talking to her, if he's not making an effort, if he's not showing her that she's important to him, she's not doing it anymore. If he wants to stay in the Eight of Swords energy, he's going to end up losing everything. He's going to end up being the one left out in the cold. Or his other option is with the star, which is healing, hope, faith, taking a leap of faith too, uh, planting the seeds, doing the self-work, doing the inner work. And you notice the water too. It's like water is very healing. So this could be like a healing bath that someone needs to take. I also feel like this is somebody like connecting to nature. I'm just getting that energy of like somebody because like, I don't know. I never look at it like that, but I noticed how this person is like exposed. Like they're, they're willing to be vulnerable, raw, authentic, honest, emotional. Um, they're willing to do the healing work. And it's almost like a reflective surface, like water. It's like, he's like willing to look in the mirror, you know, willing to, to take accountability. And if he does, he gets the 10 of cups. Ten of Cups is everything. Ten of Cups is true love, a foundation, home, happiness. Like this is this is true love right here. So if he goes down that path of of healing, of self discovery, of taking accountability, of um, you know, being his true self finally.
of being, you know, not caring so much about what people think, but finally being, being willing to just be who he is, regardless of what anyone thinks of it. You know, not being worried about how, it, it, not worrying about how he looks or, or if he's breaking old promises to himself that are outdated. It, it's like letting go of old mentalities, letting go of old ways and, of thinking and being that are holding him back. You know, if he's willing to do that healing work, if he's willing to be brave and authentic and honest and, and expressive and, you know, just, you know, just vulnerable um, and really take a look in the mirror and, and work on what needs to be worked on and just get in touch with his higher self and his spirit guides, get on the same page with them and, and um, you know, really calling his, he really needs to call his higher self in and just kind of merge with his higher self and be open to to you know giving up this war inside of himself and if he does those things then then yeah he gets the ten of cups he gets true happiness fulfillment love he gets he gets all of it it's up to him the choice is his he can play small and lose everything or he can step up do the healing be assertive take on that emperor role step into that divine masculine role um and he gets the ten of cups he gets everything he's ever wanted, makes his dreams come true. So it's really up to him what path he wants to go down. Does he want to go down a stagnant, lonely, karmic path? Or does he want to go down, you know, more of a destined path that's actually going to make him happy? And it's not just about this Queen of Wands. It's just it's just about being his true self in general. You know what I mean? Like, even if he decided to go on this path alone, it's still he needs to... He still has to, you know, reconnect with who he really is and be himself again. Um, okay. That went, out, that went over way longer than I planned on it. <laughs> but like I said, the high priestess already knows everything and she does accept him as, she, as he is. Uh, this queen of wands, though, I don't think... Hmm. Vulnerability, receptive, yeah. Yeah, she went from being very vulnerable, very receptive, and a very gentle, feminine, loving energy. You can see, like, how she's in that dress. She's just, she's very open. Maybe even, like, a, I don't know, like, very sensual energy is kind of what I get from this card. Where it's, like, this Queen of Wands was just very vulnerable, very receptive. Very open to him, just loving him unconditionally, supporting him unconditionally. She saw his flaws. She saw his good side. She saw all of it with the high priestess energy. She saw all of it. She knows all of it. And she still was just wanting to build a solid foundation with, with him and do the work and build trust so that they could have that 10 of pentacles, 10 of cups together, um, which is what, what, you know, they were working towards until he ran from it. But, um, but yeah, it's almost like now the queen of wands is kind of in this cold guarded, distrusting, fearful energy. She's afraid of, you know, she's tired of getting her heart broken. And I think it's also saying it's like you you decide this man, like I've said, it's, it's kind of reiterating what we got here. Um, you decide like, you know, he gets to decide if he wants to step up, if he wants to make an effort uh, to be part of her life and show her that she's important to him. And cut out any, you know, third parties or black magic or anything else going on and like really, you know, make the effort, then she's going to be vulnerable and receptive. She's going to match his energy. But if he's doing this shit over here, playing small, he's going to be left out in the cold. He's going to lose a lot more than he thinks he's going to lose. And I don't know why I said that. That was really weird how that came out. I don't even know what that means. It, it might. Damn, I, I hate giving messages like this, but. And again, it's not like saying, I'm, I'm not saying like, oh, if he doesn't choose her, he's going to go through all this. I'm saying if he doesn't choose himself, he's going to go through all this shit. You know what I mean? Like if he chooses to play it small, if he chooses not to be his true self, if he chooses to prioritize what everybody else thinks and not prioritize his own soul, then that's when he has the bad karma. That's when he gets left out in the cold. That's when he gets, it's, it's almost like he's been so worried about his image that I feel like something's going to crash and burn where his image is going to be destroyed anyway in the community. This man might have his image, like something might happen. Like, I don't know if it's rumors or what, but like something might happen where it's like, 
he's 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 been so worried about his image and that's going to be taken away from him it's like that mask is going to be ripped away from him because he didn't want to take the mask off on his own um because it's like that karmic lesson about not caring so much about what people think so if you just care and care and care and prioritize what everyone thinks you're gonna you know eventually the divine is gonna step in and be like okay well you know now now everyone sees you this certain way and now you know what are you gonna do about it now like you know what I mean like they're not gonna they're, they're not gonna let you maintain this false image of yourself they're they're gonna you know your true self is coming out but anyway as far as the queen of wands go as far as the love aspect of the situation go yeah it's up to him whether he wants to stay in this energy and um she's going to be cold and guarded and distrusting or if he wants to like i said make those changes and make an effort towards her. She's definitely not going to message him. I feel like this Queen of Wands is she's not messaging him. She doesn't care how she feels. She might be depressed. She might be whatever she's feeling. She's not going to message him. You know, he's he's going to step up. If he wants her, if he wants this Queen of Wands, he's going to step up and he's going to be the, the emperor now. He's going to be the strong one in this connection now if he wants her back. Um, he's going to make some kind of effort. He's going to make an effort to see her. He's going to make an effort to talk to her, to have open, honest communication. He's going to make an effort to, to show her that he wants to be part of her life if he wants her back. And like I said, if he's doing that, she's going to, she's going to match his energy. If, if he's doing that, if he's being vulnerable and open and making the effort, she's going to match his energy and be vulnerable and receptive and open to him too. You know, She's, she's going to match his energy. She's going to give him whatever he's giving her. If he's distant, she's going to be distant. If he's cold and guarded, she's going to be cold and guarded. But if he's being in the masculine role, she's going to naturally be in the feminine role. She's going to take that gentle, loving, feminine role. But you have to give someone a safe space to be in feminine energy. You can't, like... A woman will be vulnerable and she'll be open if she has a safe space to be vulnerable. If she feels like she's going to get her heart ripped out if she's vulnerable, she's she's going to be guarded. She's going to be scared. But if she knows that it's safe to just, you know, be cuddly with him, to just to be gentle, to be loving, to be nurturing with him, if she knows that she's safe, that he has her back, that he's the protector, the provider, that he's in his masculine energy, that he's, you know, doing the pursuing, that he's making the effort to show her that she's really important to him, then she will reciprocate that energy and be vulnerable and receptive and be in her feminine role. You know what I mean? She's going to give him whatever he's giving her. Um, but yeah, so it's kind of up to this masculine now, whether he wants to go down a karmic path or whether he wants to go whether he wants to to be the person that he's meant to be that he wants to be deep down that he maybe that he used to be so that's kind of where it seems like we're at um is there anything else but yeah he's gonna have to come correct if he wants her back and i i would say probably sooner than later um because it's almost like she has this wall up. So it's like his actions or his inaction too. It's it's not just about what you do. Sometimes it's about what you don't do. If you're not messaging somebody every day, if you're not, or even messaging them every few days, if you're not making an effort to see them consistently, if you're not making an effort to show them they're important to you, if you're not making an effort to be in your life, it's like that will cause her walls to go up more too. If these, you know what I mean? It's, it's like that inaction too that's... Because that's the opposite of masculine energy as well. She can't be in her feminine energy if if he's not being in the masculine role. You know what I mean? It, it it's, There's an imbalance. He has to be in the masculine role if he wants her in this gentle feminine energy. He's going to have to be in the masculine energy. That, that balance, you know what I mean? But if she's forced to be in the masculine energy, she's going to be cold. She's going to be guarded. She's going to be distrusting. So, so in action, um, that lack of masculine energy, uh, or just, you know, breadcrumbing, repeating old patterns, she's not, she's not doing that with him anymore. Her walls are going to go up higher and higher and maybe even eventually be, you know, who knows where, the, how high those walls are going to get is what I'm saying. 
So it kind of depends on on him. The ball is in his court, what he does next, what actions he takes towards her next, or what actions he doesn't take as well. Whether those walls go up or whether those walls come down and she allows herself to be an invulnerable, receptive, feminine energy again with him. So it's completely up to him at this point what path to go down. But um, but yeah, lots of lots of shakeups one way or another. Um All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. If anyone wants a private reading, feel free to email me. It's dragonenchantress at AOL.com. Thank you guys for watching.